Nobis Colanta. While they are coming in, Your Excellency, I'm sure you'll agree with me that Nairobi School has produced some of the finest. We have the Prime Cabinet Secretary present, who is also an alumni of this school. Makofi Kwake, Prime Cabinet Secretary. We have the PS Sports, who is here. Um, Wanamweke, to be here, Makofi Pia. You are truly, your Master of Ceremony is also an alumni of this school. To be here, Makofi Pia. Thank you. So we'll have the Nairobi School Anthem, followed by a prayer before we take our seats in Nairobi School. Kindly let's have your anthem. Thank you very much for that hymn, and now I'll call upon uh, Vengi Mutai, to, uh, Reverend Vengi Mutai, to come and lead us in a word of prayer before we can take our seats. Welcome, sir. Shall we play? Almighty God, we come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving for granting us this day the gift of life, the gift of salvation and many other provisions, Lord, that you have granted us. We start here sorry that we have not lived according to your will. We have fallen short of your glory in many ways, in our thoughts, in our deeds, and in our utterances. We seek forgiveness and acceptance because you are righteous, 
but we are glad that your Holy Spirit is with us, can cleanse us, and keep us ready to listen and to hear from you. Thank you, Lord, for the Republic of Kenya and the leadership that you have given us. Our president, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, and his entire government. And you knew that they would be in leadership at a time like now, so that they can lead this nation. Charging, charging times are with us, but Lord, you, we know that you're going to equip them. You give them the wisdom that is required, the interventions that they need to put in place, so that they can lead this nation into prosperity. We should not look at the difficulties that are allowed us, but we should look at the great God who is in charge of the universe and this nation as well. And therefore, much as when we look aloud, we worry and get puzzled, but we are happy that we have a great God we trust in who is going to guide us and guide our leadership. So give our leaders purpose, give them unity, give, let them have rapport and work together, and it shall be well. You are going to help them to get to where, Lord, you want the nation to get to. We thank you even for this education sector, light from our kindergartens, through our primary schools, our secondary schools, our tertiary, and even our higher learning institutions. We know education plays a very critical part in every nation, and we are happy, Lord, because even when we are in this world, we refer to you as a teacher, and therefore you have concern for education. We therefore want to commit the entire education sector into your hearts. At a time like now when we have the CBC, we would pray that it goes on well so that it is able to cater for the needs of our children who we need to invest in so that their tomorrow will be good and not just their tomorrow, but the nation as well. We look forward, Lord, to the system being implemented where there are hiccups, Lord, help us on what we need to do we, are, we need the resources we know that you are able to provide. We thank you for this day. Here we are at Nairobi School, a school that has a long history, a, hist a school that has shaped many. And we are here, Lord, because of the infrastructure that has been put in place and even the infrastructure that will be put in place. We thank you that we are here to be with the students, to be with the staff, the governors of the school and everybody else. Help us, Lord, to work together so that we may make this school a great school. Thank you even for having our president to visit us. Be with us as we proceed with the rest of the program. We invite your blessings the entire session that we are having. This is our prayer, a prayer of faith offered to you with a lot of humility, but with a lot of faith in Jesus' name. Together we say... Amen. Thank you. We may take our seats. Your Excellency, the President of this great nation, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, the CS Education, the D D DCJ, Justice Philomena Mwilu, all Cabinet Secretaries present, all Principal Secretaries present, the School Board of Management, the Parents Association, representatives of all the parents, students, ladies, and gentlemen. Your Excellency, sir, with your permission, allow me to now call upon Steve Luyo to give a very short poem that is titled, Welcome Home. Then we proceed with the rest of the program. Steve Luyo, and we can encourage him with a clap as he comes. Steve, Karibu. Is Steve available? Is he prepared? Steve Luyo, presenting Welcome Home by Dennis Omolo. Some call it parts, others Call it home. It was built from scratch, just like the famous Rome. 
Our story truly begins in 1902. A foundation was laid, promising and new. They instilled rigorous culture and planted a thousand trees, made it an academic posture to nourish our expertise. They opened its doors so that we will belong from the lake to the sea. We all came along to form a tight family that can't go wrong. Whether rich or poor, we all hear the gong from the mosque to the church. We can sing our songs. Excellence in books is right at our core. We produce stellar men since the days of yore. We are famous for rugby, hockey, and even more. Don't forget drama and music, just like before. A balanced school like ours can never be a bore. We are boys turned to men. Can you hear them roar? This is the day when we welcome a hero. He has triumphed in battle, yet he started from zero. The emperor. The conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. He's a gentleman, a hustler. He has no fear. With him at the helm, Kenya will be the promised land. The foundation laid, our school will stand. Our future is bright with the board in place, led by many. There's no challenge you can't face. Patch is our home. It's an immortal brand. Right from the dome, we are a rock solid band. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Bona Steve Luyo. No pressure, Your Excellency, but we're expecting to get to the promised land from what he has said. At this point, Your Excellency, allow me to now invite the principal, Mr. Kasper to now come and make some remarks as we continue the program. Pongeze kwa makofi tafadhali, Principal Kasper, karibu sana. Thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. Your Excellency, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi, our very own, Pacherian Saklafo Mudavadi is in the house. <laughs> the Cabinet Secretary, Education, Honorable Ezekiel Machogu, Honorable Principal Secretary is present, distinguished uh, guests, members of the board, manage, board of management, the Parents Association, alumni, parents, teachers, and students. Your Excellency, we are greatly honored to welcome you to Nairobi School to open the just completed Longonot House and lay a foundation stone for the first phase of the science complex and commission the purified water drinking station. The 428 capacity dormitory is a proud addition to our school's infrastructure which is already strained, while the purified water drinking station would ensure safe drinking water for our large student population. Thank you, thank you for gracing this day as we mark this very important milestone in the history of uh, our school. Your Excellency, Nairobi School, which, is, which initially catered for white students only, has a rich history. Spanning 121 years, it was founded in 1902 and was initially located at the railway station. It was relocated to this site in 1929 when the foundation stone was laid by Sir Edward Greek, the then governor. At this time, it was known as Kabete Boys Secondary School, but it was renamed Prince of Wales School. As the headmaster then felt the former name was a little clumsy. The school infrastructure reflects our rich Kenyan history and the National Museums of Kenya listed it as a protected site in the year 2002. Um, 
We still, this is a school where unfortunately you will find wooden houses, but they also have a, a rich history, a beautiful history. Some of those wooden houses were done between 1939 and 1945. During the interwar years, there was scarcity of cement. So that is why we had uh, these timber houses put up. And some of them, like the music room made of Mabati. The population increased uh, during the Second World War. And the then Kenya governor authorized the building of corrugated iron sheet dormitories. The school was at one point moved to Naivasha, that is during the war, uh, during the war, due to fear of bombing by the Italians. Once the war was over, the school continued to grow. It is good to note that the school opened its doors to African students in 1961 in preparation for independence. The first African student at the Prince of Wales was David Thunday of Nicholson House, 1961 to 1968. He's still alive. We did invite him, but he could not make it. And uh, he was followed by Mararu Njoroge, of Rhodes House, 1964-1965. At Independence, the school was given the name Nairobi School and took its place among the first 18 national schools. Your Excellency, Nairobi School has over the years remained one of the premier schools in provision of holistic education, guided by the school motto, to the uttermost and the vision to be a world-class center of academic, spiritual, and moral excellence. We are happy to report that over the years, we have registered outstanding results in all running, learning areas, in examinations, in sporting, in drama, and in music. Testimony to this is Nairobi School's contribution in the national scene. We have governors, senators, and other prominent leaders among our alumni, for example, I did, as I said earlier, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, a resident of Kirinyaga House and head of house. <laughs> Justice John Chigiti, Honorable Moses Lesonet, MP Elda Maravin, Honorable Kibet Komingoi, MP of Kiburet, Eseli Simiyu, Honorable Gitobu Imanyara, Abne Nasir, the famous Abne Nasir is one of us, and a notable sportsman, I want to note. For those who grew up early in the 1980s when we had the safari rally, you would hear of Mike Doty, you would hear of Vic Preston Jr., those who are students of Nairobi School. Roger Whittaker, there's this song people love most about my land is Kenya. He was a student here. The principal secretaries and CEOs, medical practitioners, business people, educationists. The former founder of Stare, the late Geoffrey Griffins, was also here. We, your, your, your Excellency, we continue to hold on to our ideals and deliberately expose our learners to the best possible in education practice. Our learners have opportunity to explore and grow in their talents. Our school band, for example, is the most decorated school band in the region, and we are a national center for music. Our learners participate in Mathematics Olympiad, and so far, they have competed and represented Kenya in national and international platforms. Your Excellency, intertwined with this story of success is a story of the struggle to keep up. We all appreciate that growth often poses challenges. That is no different for, our, for us. Our infrastructure is generally old, mostly over 100 years, that require constant repair and maintenance. The growing number also demand expansion of facilities. We, we have already shared with Your Excellency. We have already shared before we came over here. So I need not repeat what we did share your Excellency. We are grateful for the support that you have previously accorded this school. In uh, 2014, you graciously opened uh, the school li library and generously addressed the challenges we had then. We remain grateful for the support you accorded us 
then. We are ready and willing to expand. We need to grow. We need to take more students, provide opportunities for students who qualify. We, want, we, would, we would wish to be ready for CBC. And that is why we are in dire need of infrastructural improvement. We did share, Your Excellency, a number of those challenges, so I will not repeat them here. Uh, Your Excellency, we have joined hands in the government effort in afforestation. Nairobi School has indeed heeded your call to plant more trees in an effort to combat climate change. In this regard, the school has planted 1,000 uh, trees recently. And on Saturday, 27th of May, 2023, we will, in collaboration with Standard Chartered Bank, do an additional 2,000 seedlings. It, it may also interest you that Nairobi School deliberately takes care of needy students and strives to keep them in school by all means in bid to ensure education for all. We are grateful to the organizations and individuals who lend us a hand in this noble mission. Before I finish, I would request the teachers of Nairobi School, if they are near here, they could stand. The teachers near here, are you near here? We have a staff of 103. 103, 78 from the Teacher Service Commission and the rest employed by the Board of Management. Our two deputies, Mr. Musioki is right here and Mr. Musili is right there. Let's be seated, please. Once, Your Excellency, once again, we thank you most sincerely for gracing this occasion. You are indeed a true friend of Nairobi School and we, in our turn, assure you of our support and commitment as we aspire to transform this school from the good school it is to the great institution guided by our motto to the uttermost. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Casper. At this point, Your Excellency, allow me to call upon Ms. Rebecca Morigo, who is the Chairperson Board of Management for Nairobi School. Welcome. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Dr. William Ruto, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Msalia Mudafadi, our own, the Cabinet Secretary of Education, Honorable Ezekiel Machogu, other Cabinet Secretaries here present, distinguished guests, members of the Board of Management, members of the Parents Association, parents, teachers, students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Your Excellency, it gives me tremendous joy this afternoon to welcome you back to Nairobi School. On behalf of the Board of Management, the Parents Association and the entire Nairobi School community, we say Karibu Tena. Your Excellency, allow me now to introduce a team um, of board uh, members drawn from various professions in this country. They were introduced to you. I will ask them to kindly stand and wave. Members of the Board of Management, Nairobi School. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, we are indeed blessed to welcome you. Like I said there before, we have very present memories of your visit in 2014. If I can remember very well, it was on the 16th, on the 16th of June, 2014, when you came, a very good afternoon, to commission 
our new library. Our results will tell you that we have made good use of that facility. We have continued to grow, as the principal has uh, said, and we are very overjoyed today as we come to celebrate yet a new era in the life of Nairobi School. Your Excellency, in a very special way, I would like to appreciate on behalf of our school, all government agencies for their participation and support from the time we began the project that has made us to be here today. And because there are many, I would like specifically to point out to Kenha, because we have worked with them, we started with them, and this afternoon they did whisper that we still have unfinished business with them. Thank you, Kenha. You are Excellency, Nairobi School is a very lively, diverse, and warm community. It has a long history and reputation of helping students reach the top of their potential. The old Cabrians, the alumni, are leaders in their own uh, fields of expertise in Kenya and beyond. Your Excellency, Mine is to affirm the sentiments of the board and the school fraternity. At this particular time, I would like you to note that here in our school, we pride ourselves on the strong relationships that exist between our enthusiastic and very obedient students, very supportive parents and guardians, along with the professionalism and dedication of our wonderful staff who ensure a holistic education for all our students. Allow me, Your Excellency, to let you know that we have a very vibrant pregnancy. All our denominations and religions here, they are given their space. And I want at this particular point to say that we do also have a very vibrant a counseling department for the psycho social support. And we take discipline very, very, very seriously. That is why you have heard us saying, we only trust and then we obey. Your Excellency, this afternoon, I would like to say that we in Nairobi School, the board wants to assure you that though we are aging, we want to age gracefully. I do not want to reveal what we discussed because when a mother and a son are in the house, you don't need to know the details, but you will be told at some point. Your Excellency, it has been said that, my, uh, that any individual can become anything in the real world as long as they have proper education, and the right training. Allow me to add that with the right staff, right attitude, right tools, right environment, and a great faith, and an enduring hope, everything is possible. Bearing in mind that the process of education is ever-changing and challenging, we are up to the task. And because we have proved you of our challenges, where we have been in the last 120 years, where we are today, and where we want to be, so that when we welcome you back on 24th September 2029 to celebrate the next mile, Your Excellency, you will be proud of what we have accomplished. Your Excellency, our parents, are very supportive, and I would like to pass a vote of thanks to them, starting with my very able PA Chair, Madam Waja, for the work that they continue to do. And we appreciate the board members. We are team members, I'm only the team leader. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for having faith in me. Your Excellency, 
we may have challenges because of the population. But I want to thank Dr. Masharia, who this afternoon has spoke with me, and she said, Mom, don't worry, teachers are on the way. I thank you, Madam Nancy, and I will be here to receive the new teachers. Finally, Your Excellency, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of all stakeholders, the alumni, all board members, past and present, our chief principal, parents and staff for their wonderful commitment to this school. It takes a village to raise a child, so says an African proverb. Together, we can make it to the uttermost. Your Excellency, these wonderful young men listening to me, they call me Chief Mom. And last night we were here with the PHA until, uh, I don't want to say, but it was late. And a group said, Mom, when we go out, we have to borrow the girls' buses. And I've been to Gong with them. And when they come out, people are asking, ah, young men, state house, girls, St. George's. And they said, Mami, how does your son go Kutogosa Mschana na V8 ya Mschana? Your Excellency. Thank you once again for coming to grace this occasion. May God bless you. May God, may, may God continue to bless Kenya. May God bless the great Nairobi school. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, allow me now to call upon Ms. Rose Wanja, the pair, chairperson of the Parents Association Nairobi School. Karibu. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Dr. William Ruto, Prime Cabinet Secretary and our alumni, Msali Amdavadi, our Deputy CJ, Philomena Mwilu, who has been our board member, our CS Ezekiel Machogu, all PSAs and all CSAs present, members of the Board of Management, members of the Parents Association, teachers, students, and the alumni. Good afternoon. I'm the PA Chair. With humble humility, Your Excellency, allow me to show you the team that I work with who are parents of the Nairobi School. I'll kindly ask you that you may, you may stand up that is the team that work together with the chief principal. Thank you very much. You may wave and have a seat. Thank you so much. It gives me joy to welcome you to our school on behalf of all the parents and our dear sons. I'm humbled by finding time out of your busy schedule for a second time in this school to come and partner with us for the benefit of our sons and future leaders of this great country. May God expand your territory. I'm also delighted to appreciate people of goodwill who have partnered with us. Your Excellency, we appreciate you and Captain Mohammed of Skyward Express Airline, who is an alumni of this school, for your generous donations of 430 beds and mattresses to equip the new Longonot House. We feel honored as parents for that guest, kind gesture. The party group Limited, it's an aviation company from South Africa for the donation of a purified drinking water station which will benefit our school with clean drinking water. We really are determined as a school to venture into aviation as we fly to the uttermost. Your Excellency, through your good office, it is my prayer that with the Water for Schools Fund and donors through the Ministry of Education and Water, I believe that each school can adopt a purified drinking water station to control waterborne diseases. Your Excellency, I tender my appreciation as well to your very good friend, Mr. Guru of Devki Group 
For the times I have come to his assistant, and he has never turned me away. Indeed, it is because of people like him that makes the world a beautiful place. Your Excellency, I cannot forget to appreciate the current and previous parents of the Nairobi School for having partnered with the school and fully funded the building of Naivasha House, the ablution block, 10 classrooms that costed a total amount of 180 million. And now the science complex that has just kicked off, costing 150 million in phase one and two. Currently, the parents have committed 25 million for a kickoff, and I believe by the collaboration we have, we have faith by the grace of God, we shall raise the balance and have it completed as faith is believing in things that you cannot see. I'm convinced our parents are determined. Your Excellency, I would also like to request you that you ask the alumni led by Captain Mohammed and Honorable Msalyam Davadi to come and partner with us in the science complex. I'm filled, thank you, sir. I'm filled with gratitude and admiration to our sons who have continuously maintained hard work and obedience. Indeed, sons, we are proud of you and we assure you that as parents, we will always stand with you to ensure you have a conducive environment for learning as the greatest investment we can give you for a lifetime is education. As you determine to achieve the highest grades, always remember that intelligence plus character is the goal of true education. As our BOM chair has always reminded you that a gray without a character is empty. Your Excellency, sir, education is not confined to the boundaries of the classroom alone. It encompasses the holistic development of our students, nurturing their talents and fostering a sense of community. The dining and the multipurpose hall play a pivotal role in fulfilling these objectives, providing spaces where students can come together, engage in various activities, and build lasting bonds. Currently, Your Excellency, our, class, our school faces a pressing challenge. The existing hall was meant for a number of only 200 students and is inadequate to meet the growing needs of our students' population, which is now 2,305. Your Excellency, you can see I'm a mother of 2,305 sons. Each passing year, enrollment continues to increase, thus training and stretching the already existing facility. This not only hampers the quality of their educational experience, but also restricts their participation in extracurricular activities, cultural act events, and important gatherings. Your Excellency, sir, by building the multipurpose hall, we can create a vibrant hub for innovation and collaboration, providing our students with a platform to venture into technology. It will as well create more room for parents gathering for important school functions. Therefore, Your Excellency, sir, we humbly request you to consider extending your support and allocating resources for the building of the multipurpose hall come dining. We firmly believe that by investing in this facility, we are investing in the future of our nation through our sons. As I wind up, Your Excellency, we as Nairobi school parents, are humbled by your visit and time. We promise you to collaborate with you and your ministry for the betterment of our sons. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rose. And next, Your Excellency. And carry on. Program. Karibu. Tumpigie makofi tafadhali. Welcome. Thank you. Your Excellency, sir. We are uh, gathered in this ground once again, and we want to thank you for your unwavering commitment and support for education because on Saturday, Your Excellency, you were in Ermur Girls for a function similar to this one. Your Excellency, Nairobi School is one of our topmost national schools and actually the best national school that we have in the country. Over the years, <laughs> over the years, Your Excellency, Nairobi School has continually and consistently performed very well in national exams and in particular last year 
2022 with a mean score of 9.5. They had a candidature of 503, out of which 496 of them are joining our public universities. And the other seven are also joining our Tibetan institutions. So we thank them. And that, Your Excellency, has been because of the high level exceptional discipline in this school. It's actually one school, Your Excellency, that we have never had any cases of in discipline, and we really thank them for that. They have also demonstrated fair uh, use of hard work, teamwork, and the resilience, and the Nairobi School, Your Excellency, we look forward in years to come that indeed they will be the very top in this country. Finally, Your Excellency, as I came here and I was engaging with the teachers of this school, 103 teachers, only 30 of houses in this school, and they did indicate to me that actually they are in support of your government program of providing housing, not only in Nairobi, but in the entire country. That indeed the beneficiaries of the housing program in the country, because our teachers are in each and every part of this republic, they will be the beneficiaries because apart from the 3%, actually the highest turnover, getting another 3% from what you give from the employer, I think if there was anybody to complain, Your Excellency, it would have been the employer because our teachers are happy because in Nairobi and other places within the Republic of Kenya, they will be able to get housing because that is one other serious problem that we have as the teachers because some of them stay in houses which are not so good for them. Finally, Your Excellency, again, as I was engaging with Madame, the chair and the principal, they have 10 acres which they had given area on to carry and it has been now given back. And they said, because of your program, uh, of course, knowing the adverse effect of the climate change and what it has done to our country and globally, they are going to commit the 10 acres in the plant, in the growing seedlings that they will be able to supply to other parts of Nairobi and other parts of the country. And they have said, Your Excellency, that starting next week, me and my colleague from environment, Soiban CS, we will be able to provide one, they said they are starting with one million seeds, uh, uh, which we will provide on the tubes, so that they will be able to start with one million uh, seedlings. And Your Excellency, if they also uh, commit and do that, I will be able to report back to you that indeed they have done. We have agreed that is part of the performance contract. Before, yeah, before we can also be able to commit anything and I'm sure that they will be able to do well in that. And with those remarks, Your Excellency, with your permission, sir, I will request the Deputy CJ uh, before I invite His Excellency, the Prime Cabinet Secretary to make his remarks. Our deputy teacher is here. He will be able to encourage our students, our boys, particularly those who want to be uh, the future uh, lawyers and to serve in our judiciary in this country. Welcome, madam. Welcome. Excellency Dr. Um, William Samoy Ruto, Excellency Mdavadi, Cabinet Secretaries, students and parents. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The one thing that I know is an equalizer, an equalizer without question, is education. Now you get that it does not matter who your mother is, and it doesn't matter who your father is. It does not matter what background you come from. And so, the boys that we got in here and the men we expect to get out, I urge you to come out as men of substance. I have been a member of this school, <laughs> almost a student myself, because my two boys were here 
uh, each did their four years, and for the four years, I was a student. Those of you who are mothers know how we feel around exam time. This school, I've actually taken my sons to the uttermost, for which I truly thank God, and you, Mr. Minor, and before you, my friend sitting behind you, who was the principal when I entered the school as a um, board member. And so, students, it's you I want to talk to. And I'll keep repeating, if I speak for the next one hour, that education is the equalizer. It doesn't matter what you went through because, before you go to Nairobi school. Now you are here. Please give an, a good account of yourself. You didn't walk here with 100 marks. You go to Nairobi school because you had great, great marks. Now improve them. Those seven students last year that we didn't send to the university, may God grant that this year all of us are going to the university. Thank you, parents, for continuing to be great partners of this school. Um, I said I was a parent. I was a student also, but I was also on the board um, for some six years. I do not know. The, the only other school that I think is better than Nairobi school, sorry, Mr. C.S., is Loreto Girls High School, Limur, <laughs> where I was minted to be made the Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic by God's grace. But you boys, why would you let anybody be better than yourselves? Beat them all, and please take Nairobi to the uttermost. May God bless all of us. Thank you, Madam Sears. Your Excellency, your Principal Secretaries are also here. They can stand for them to be acknowledged and recognized. Uh, thank you. Those are our principal secretaries. We thank the CEO Teacher Service Commission. She is here. She has given us teachers in this school. We appreciate you. We now thank one of this school, uh, the prime cabinet secretary, who is an old boy, Curtis of Nairobi School. He is the cabinet secretary of the Republic of Kenya. And uh, your excellency, welcome. Prime Cabinet Secretary. And again, <laughs> Nairobi School has produced uh, champions, people serving in our country in various capacities. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Honorable Machogo. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Madam Deputy Chief Justice, the principal of Nairobi School, and all the members of this great institution as parents, as students, good afternoon. This is truly a humbling moment for me. Uh, Your Excellency, I joined Nairobi School in 1974. And then I walked out of the gates of Nairobi School in 1979. That is 44 years today. And when you have been in an institution for six years, it is very, very emotional when you have to walk out knowing that your tour of duty in that institution has come to an end. It's like being told that you have to walk out of home. It's not easy. So today, I'm here feeling very happy that I have walked back into this school, not actually walked back, driven back into this school. <laughs> and entering and looking at the buildings, all those great moments came back, a very touching moment. Your Excellency, this chapel here, 
it would be dreadful if you came late for the service. We had to be punctual. We had to be there. Because the song that was sung, we had to trust and obey in Jesus. And it always started here. So I am here, first of all, to say congratulations to those who have held this institution to what it is today and who are also planning to make it even bigger. The principal did mention some names, Your Excellency. Uh, Roger Whitaker, uh, the icon of the Indian lady and my land is Kenya. Uh, somebody like Byron Georgiades, perhaps one of the most prominent legal minds, was also an old student here. There's also some mention that uh, the clerk, the former president of uh, South Africa, also had a surgeon or surgeon in this school. And uh, the then labor leader, I've forgotten his name, but he's a lord. Uh, he was also in this school. And of course, Musalia. So this school has got a good foundation, it has got a culture, it has got a lot of discipline, and I'm confident that if we keep that tradition, we shall always continue to nurture very good men from this particular institution. Uh, Your Excellency, the second point I want to put across is that when we have such iconic entities, and there are many. Uh, we have uh, this school, we have others like Kapsabet, we have Moy Girls, we have Alliance, we have Loreto, we have Cardinal Otunga, we have Maseno, you have Mangu. The, 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 the list is quite endless. A lot of these institutions have a significant history for this country. And I would want to say that today you're coming here, perhaps signals something that is very good for the Ministry of Education to consider, that some special attention be given to these iconic institutions for purposes of enriching our heritage as a nation and also pushing forward a message that we need to have premium entities to help grow our human resource. <laughs> Finally, let me say this. I'm not a lawyer, but I know that you're not supposed to argue with a judge. She said that uh, there's a school that is better than Nairobi school, Loreto Girls. Um, but as much as I may not argue with the judge, I think I'm allowed to register my objection. <laughs> I am convinced 100% uh, that this is the school. And speaking not as a prime cabinet secretary, Your Excellency, speaking as one of Nairobi School, I am really very happy on behalf of all these good people to say Asante Sana for gracing this occasion and being with us today. Let it not be the last. Uh, come again uh, whenever you have that opportunity. Um, this is where we played rugby. This is where we learned how to sidestep stones when there's mandamano. <laughs> this is the institution that really brought a lot of brotherhood and cultivated nationalism. So I speak with that emotion because I know that this is a good school. Uh, finally, um, I don't know what else to say, but uh, Mama Uliuliza Kitu uh, maybe as a, as a good sign so that my young schoolmates 
uh, do not feel embarrassed when they go out to various institutions. I will donate at least a million shillings to put on the table so that you can start the journey of getting <laughs> the refurbishment of, of, of the bus. I was listening to the president as he walked uh, and he was looking at those yellow buses there and he made some remarks, sasa nikanyamaza tu nikasema sasa ametuweza hapo. So your excellency, it's now my pleasure uh, to request you to come forward and uh, speak to this uh, gathering here of Nairobi School. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all shout to the uttermost? <laughs> to the uttermost. To the uttermost. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Musalia Mudabadi. Please, let's take our seats. <clears throat> Asante sana. Um, the um, Prime Cabinet Secretary, our CS for Education, Principal Secretaries, the Chair of the Board of Governors, the Chair of the Parents Association, the President of the Student uh, Fraternity, and uh, parents and students, good afternoon. I am very happy to be here um, another time. I was here sometime in 2016. I did promise that time that I would come back. I didn't know it was going to take so long. But uh, anyway, I'm here. I may not uh, say many things the way my good brother Musalia has said about the school, because I went to another school. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I can claim some association with this school through two people. The chair of the board, Madam Rebecca uh, Murigo, and your former uh, uh, head teacher of the school, Mr. Kibet, the three of us graduated the same day at Nairobi University. So I can at least claim that I was a, a classmate of, uh, of those two great people who have great association with this school. I know Musalia has uh, raised an objection about whether this is the greatest or there is another one. I do not want to engage myself in that one because I'm not sure. <laughs> but I also want to raise a, an objection on what he said about the bus. I think uh, Prime Cabinet Secretary just buy the bus. <laughs> And uh, if you need help, look for friends. <laughs> and one of them is standing before you. <laughs> so, I am sure Musalia will deliver the bus. So at least we have one, one thing out of the way. But I'm pleased to join the Nairobi School community to celebrate two developments for this renowned institution the commissioning of a new dormitory and the laying of the foundation stone for a new science uh, laboratory, which I just did this afternoon. These projects will enhance and augment the learning experience, improve student living conditions, and help deliver an even more holistic education for this generation of students and those who will come after. Infrastructural facilities are essential to educational experience. The learning environment matters, and it is wonderful to see this esteemed institution building on its great legacy and working hard to win the future. Education is not an investment in the present. It is an attempt 
to effect the prosperity tomorrow by molding the human resource necessary to achieve that success, but doing it today. Every society that seeks a better future must begin by improving its education. In the words of the poet, Maya Angelou, education is the passport of the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare today. I salute everyone involved in these projects because your efforts will have an impact on the future of this great institution, the future of education, and the future of our country. The Dormitory Commission today is funded by the government through the Kenya National Highway Authority and will house 430 students, relieving the burden on eight dormitories that currently accommodate the student fraternity. This project affirms that when we come together as government parents and teachers and pool our efforts, ideas, and resources, we can accomplish great things for our children, for our schools, and for our country. This school has a rich history and a track record of producing eminent professionals, some of whom have gone on to play leading roles in commerce, in health, engineering, public service, and other sectors of our society. In total, 20,424 uh, young men have left this institution and are out serving this country and the world in various capacities. I think that's monumental. Um, I'm reminded that from the, what the words of your chair of the PA, that uh, you come here as boys and you leave as men. Education is the cornerstone of progress and development. It has the power to transform lives and transcend limitations imposed by economic backgrounds. I am reminded by the words made earlier that education being the greatest equalizer, it makes us equal. It makes you the same, irrespective of the village you come from, irrespective of the region you come from, irrespective of your background. We, re we recently launched a new funding model for higher education designed to ensure that deserving students from the vulnerable and needy families are able to access university education to give them the chance to write a new chapter of prosperity in their lives. And let me say this, that we are investing close to 30% of all our resources as a country in education. And we are doing so intentionally and deliberately because the greatest resource we have as a nation is our human capital. And to be able to sharpen and mold that human capital, it is education that is the instrument for us to make our human capital that much better. And therefore, every coin we invest in education is an investment in the right place. I did commit that we will continuously look at how education can evolve with the realities of our times and the requirements of our industry. And that is why CBC becomes a big component of making aligning our education to the requirements of our present and making sure that it is prepared to deal with the challenges of the future. And that's why a lot of work, a lot of investment, and uh, that's the reason why I uh, put together the Presidential Working Party on education, because education is important. We cannot afford to play hide and seek or guesswork with our education. It is the reason we have hired the largest cohort of teachers 
ever in the history of our country this year. It is the reason we will do it again next year. And I am persuaded beyond any doubt that even as we take, for those of us who can, uh, take our children to uh, academies, the children of other Kenyans must equally have the same education that is being taught elsewhere. And that is why from our day schools, all primary schools, public schools, we must give ourselves the best possible chance for our children to have access to the best available education by making sure that we avail infrastructure and we avail the teachers to be able to teach. We are committed to building a modern, dynamic, and inclusive education ecosystem that is student-centered, a system that molds minds, shapes character, and transforms young men and women into agents of innovation, productivity, and progress, a system that delivers knowledge, builds competencies, and instills purpose. Um, and it is the reason why we're not only dealing with our basic education, we are also working round the clock to see how we can improve our tertiary education in our Tibets and in our universities as well. I did ask Mr. Miner, uh, the head teacher of this school, about how many students will be um, getting out of this institution after their education, and he told me 500 and 41. All those young men that will live here, they will go to Tibet, they will go to universities. As we all know, we have had serious challenges with our Tibet and university education because of funding. And it is also the reason why we developed a new funding model where we are going to double the resources available for our Tibet institutions from about 5.2 billion to 10 billion every year. And we are also going to enhance the available resources in our universities from about 44 billion to 82 billion every year. <laughs> so that we can be able to ensure that our children in, are not in school doing nothing. They are in school acquiring knowledge. And it is because, as I said, our human capital is the single most important resource that we have as a nation. And we cannot afford to gamble with the only resource that we are sure about. We live in a world that changes at frenetic pace. Our education system must equip our children with the skills and values they need to thrive in the 21st century. These are the terms of reference for the education reforms that are currently in progress. Our goal is to create an education system that is responsive to the needs of our children, matches requirements of the market, and prepares them for the challenges and opportunities of the future. We will do what it takes to achieve this goal. We are investing in new technologies, developing new curricula, and improving teacher training to ensure that our children receive world-class education. We must empower our children to think critically, solve problems, and communicate effectively. The young man who uh, did a poem for us is signature of effective communication. I must state that our education reforms are aimed at cultivating many values that, are, that our society considers dear. Under the competence-based curriculum, we are committed to fostering an environment where students can explore their passions, think critically, and collaborate effectively. 
We also encourage scientific inquiry, innovation, and a love for learning. I am very pleased that we've come here to do something about sciences. That is the space that we need to up our game. I know it's easy for students to say, I do not like sciences, uh, but I want to encourage all of us. Those who are good at sciences, don't drop the ball. Those who are good in arts, you have an opportunity. Those who are good in other pathways, you will have the chance because we want a wholesome society. We must not forget that education is a shared responsibility, a partnership of sorts between parents, teachers, and the community. I am delighted to hear that parents have committed to raise, have also already raised, I'm told, 25 million towards the science complex. This is the spirit, and this is the way. Congratulations, our parents. And because you have demonstrated the partnership, um, the Ministry of Education will complement your efforts. I have discussed with the minister, and they will work with you towards the completion of that science complex. As we lay the foundation stone for the proposed science complex, we must encourage a more pronounced interest in science, technology, and mathematics. These are the subjects that underwrite industrialization and technological innovation, areas that we must win as a nation to take the next step in our development story. I want to take a mention to address the issue of the perimeter wall between the school and Kibagari. I was there <laughs> in Kibagari, and I know we gave uh, some resources for the construction of the wall. I'm also, I also know that there were matters in court. I also know that the matters have been decided in court. I also hear the chair saying we want a win-win outcome, and I agree that it must be a win-win outcome. <laughs> and so, uh, we are going to work with the Kibagare community so that using our housing plan, we can be able to develop housing for them so that they, uh, we can be able to get a win-win outcome. So, Bwana Mweshimiwa to Tapanga. And I will be sending our Minister for Lands and Housing to discuss with the community so that we can have a win-win outcome. Um, I remember we were discussing that uh, when I came here, I think it was June, 20, uh, June 28th of 2016. Let me also uh, say to the student community, these projects are investments in you. They are a way of saying, we believe in you and you have enormous potential, and we are not willing to let it go to waste. You can count on us so that you can know that your parents, your teachers, and the government of Kenya will stand shoulder to shoulder to ensure that you have the best possible opportunity to be your best. And I'm saying this for the students in uh, this school, as I say to students across Kenya, do your part, work hard, hone your skills and talents, and take the legacy of this school to new heights. I assure you that the government's commitment to providing quality education for every child in Kenya remains unwavering. Let me also um, speak to one or two other issues that were raised to me by the chair of the board and the parents uh, association on apart from the perimeter wall that we need to work on so that there is harmony between the school and the community um, i was very pleased to hear that both the head teacher the chair of the parents association and the chair of the board of management 
are willing to admit more students to this school. It is the right thing to do. And because you're willing to give opportunity to more students in Kenya to partake of the greatness of this institution by getting admission in this institution, I agree that uh, we, will, we need to enhance the infrastructure of the school. And let me say the following. Um, we have uh, two opportunities. We have opportunities in our day schools, making sure that we have opportunities to go to secondary school as near as possible to uh, communities. And day schools play a very significant role in making sure there is access to education especially for parents in different places, in different villages in Kenya. We also know that we can expand opportunities in legacy institutions like Nairobi School and build on the great tradition that has been built over many years in these institutions. It is my suggestion to the Ministry of uh, education, that institutions like Nairobi School should be able to take in more students so that more Kenyans can benefit from the tradition and legacy that has been built over many years from this great institution. And to be able to do so, we need to expand infrastructure. Therefore, I have consulted with the Ministry of Education, the Government of Kenya, is going to make available 100 million shillings to expand the infrastructure in this school. <clears throat> I, I, know that that is, I know that that will go a long way, at least in completing the science lab and uh, in doing the, uh, you said in doing the what, when appears? In doing the? the multi-purpose hall. But because uh, I am a great believer in matters education, beyond what the ministry can do, I will look for friends so that we can do the 12 classrooms. I, I look for friends so that we can do the 12 classrooms. I'm told you need an extra 12 classrooms. But uh, Rebecca, you know, you are with me in college. If we do the, 10, the 12 classrooms, you must admit an extra 1,000 students from the whole of Kenya. Yeah, uh, take your seats. From the whole of Kenya. Why I am doing this, and uh, for the record, I will look for other friends so that we can also do the dormitory. I've been, I've been told we need a, do, a dormitory that can accommodate between 800 and 1,000 uh, young men. <laughs> but but it, it, we will have to agree on a few, uh, on a few issues that uh, there will be students from every county in Kenya in this school. See, we want to build one society. We want students from the county of Turkana here. We want students from Marsabit here. We want students from uh, Mandera here. We want to see how Kenya looks like. And Nairobi School is the right place if you have to maintain the status of being the best school in Kenya. Otherwise, you'll be overtaken by others. <laughs> huh? You want to maintain that status, right? So, to Tashirikiana Hivyo. And we are also going to work with uh, the members of parliament from this uh, region, uh, from this area 
so that we can also give an, an affirmative action for the children of Nairobi County, so that more children from Nairobi County can also be in this great institution. So, and I will be coming here personally to supervise the construction. So, uh, area. area. So, tutakuja tutaongea hiyo mambo ingine tukiwa tunashugulika na hiyo kazi. And I am saying this as I did say in uh, Limuru Girls, where I was the other day, that it is the right thing to expand infrastructure in our uh, national schools and admit students from across Kenya so that we can build the Kenyan society that we all believe in. So that students from every county can come into this institution, interact, uh, build networks, you know, uh, uh, um, get new friends from across the nation and uh, build really national schools in, in, in the Republic of Kenya, even as we continue education in all our other uh, boarding schools and uh, day schools across the Republic of Kenya. I want to uh, commit that uh, we will continue to work with the stakeholders in this sector. We will continue to consult. We will continue to ensure that the running of our schools is in such a manner that we build and cultivate the right values in our young people and project to them the right direction for us to move as a nation. Um, I will use our housing plan to sort out the Kibagare issue. So, to the Kuahuko Pamoja. And then, uh, to all of us who are here, parents, teachers, and, and, and the leaders who are here, we have 541 students from just this school walking out of that gate later this year. And they will be joining 800,000 others from other institutions in the labor market. It is our responsibility, and I want to tell every parent, every leader, the teachers, it is our responsibility as a nation to think about where these children of ours are going. We cannot continue to bury our heads in the sand and assume that somehow, by some magic, they will get a job. We have to plan on how these young people get a job. It must be intentional. It must be deliberate. Otherwise, they will be joining five million young people today in Kenya who do not have jobs. And that portends to all of us real danger. We must think as government, we must think as a society, and we must think as a nation to put in place programs that are going to sort out unemployment in Kenya. And I am very confident that, because I have not come across any leader I have not come across any parent who is comfortable with millions of young people walking our towns, our streets, our villages, unemployed. Every parent, every leader, every teacher wants the people they have taught to get out there and become something. And that is why we are having a very good conversation in Kenya on how we are going to create jobs for our young people. We have a credible plan, and I am very confident that we will find the harmony to implement it and to transform our nation, create jobs, build our economy, enhance manufacturing 
create opportunities for our, for our MSMEs and make Kenya prosperous and great for all of us. So I am truly, truly grateful. Asanteni sana kwa kunikaribisha inaitua? Eh? Patch. Patch. Eh? Sasa, sisi tuliosomea kisha kitu tazema nini sasa? Eh? Or we will be left saying at least we know alumni of Pash. Okay? So, Asanteni Sana, my very best wishes, and God bless you. Asanteni. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Let us all be 